请到了巴黎历史大学，呃，哲学系的雅克比代教授，呃，他呢同样同样也是巴黎法国马克思国际大会历届主席，呃，法国当代马克思杂志主编，呃，他出版的书主要有这个一般理论。嗯，这本书咱们人民出版社翻译出版，应该是九月份就出版了。但由于这个六十年大庆，所以让了一下路，所以没赶上今天这个拿来展示给大家。他的另外的主要研究成果就是《重新思考和重构资本论》，就是他的主要两个研究研究领域。他今天给我们讲过的内容呢，主要是这个总体理论里面的一些基本内容，对，就是对马克思理论的一种原结构解读。就是他自己的一种解解读方式，呃，我们今天呢就非常，嗯、呃，荣幸的，非常欢迎他来讲座，我们非常的欢迎。嗯，在讲座之前，咱们那个所长谢迪坤所长向这个雅克比代教授颁发我们的新月龄系列讲座证书。Ni hao. Why communism? In the Western countries, the theory initiated by Marx developed in two different registers. On the one hand, Marx learned from political experiences, revolution, class struggles, with their successes and especially their setbacks. On the other hand, from theoretical innovations. Either internal, from the Frankfurt, Frankfurt School to Gramsci and Althusser, and from Third World Movement to the materialist uh, fem, uh, feminism, or external, from Weber to Rawls, Habermas, Bourdieu, Derrida, Foucault, and many others. What is nowadays commonly called is a composition of all that. Formulated in these general terms, the Marxist tradition continues to play a prominent role in the critique of modern societies. It provides a powerful arguments to unmask the destructive character of capitalism. But Marx's analysis also contained, in my opinion, from the beginning, some deficiencies that have marked Marxism until today. In my book. Uh, theory general, I try to sketch a criticism and a reconstruction of this construction. The result is a concept of modern society <coughs> and, it, and its history that differs on some, of, on, on some points from that proposed by Marx. In the first part of my presentation, I will recall briefly the main element of this reconstruction. Which I designate as the metastructural theory. In the second part, I will present some perspective of my current research, aiming to go further in this in investigation. Is that clear? Yeah. Is that to understand? You can follow. More. Okay.就是说，他说西方国家就是由马克思所所创立的理论，在两个不同的方向发展，其中呢一个方面就是从这种政治经验，就是从革命和斗争这个方向；另一个方面呢就是从这种理论的创新。这种理论的创新呢，它
呃，今今天在今天看来，那么在他这本书中，就是这个一般理论这本书中，他想描绘勾画出，就是说对这种马克思这种建构的一种批判和重构。嗯、呃，那么他这个结果就是关于现代社会和他的历史，就是不同于马克思的一些概念的分析。他在他的第一部分呢，他要提出就是简短的提出这种重建的一些主要的成分，他把它定位为这种 matter structural 原结构。对，呃，他们翻原结构，这个 matter 是不是也有这个超结构的意思？大家可以从它。就约定俗成哈，就是原结构这个理论。第二部分呢，他要就提出他，就是说关于现在一些研究的一些一些视角。Okay. Uh, here, here Theory general was organized around three concepts: meta structure, structure, and system. The first term is that of metastructure. One remembers that Marx in Capital, book one, section, section one, begins his exposition by an ideal theory of market production, which refers to the claim of capitalism to be defined as a market society. Afterwards, he will show why this claim is unfounded. In fact, he says, in a full market economy. Labor itself becomes a commodity. In these conditions, we leave a virtuous market logic, righteously oriented toward the production of use value, and we enter a capitalist logic of exploitation and profit, oriented towards abstract wealth, surplus value. But before coming to that point, he previously formulates an imminent criticism. Of the very idea of a pure free market economy, showing that it is in itself contradictory. This is precisely what he what is illustrated as early as in the first chapter by the figure of fetishism, the partners who who accept the market. As a natural law, call themselves free, equal, and rational, while putting above their head a law that they recognize as imposing on them. This is what can be called the affirmative <coughs> contradiction of fetishism. Through this alienated human condition, Marx opposes immediately that of the. Free organization of the associated workers of the socialist future society. Let us uh, imagine a society of free men possessing together the means of production and producing according a concerted plan. Remember this famous sentence. In reality, these two conflicted claims express. To fetishist position, that of liberalism, it proclaimed itself as the unity of democracy and the free market, and that of socialism, it proclaims itself as the unity of democracy and concerted planning. In both cases, the mediation, market or organization, appears ideologically. As the relay of the immediately communicative discourse, I argue that actually the modern claim of liberty, equality, rationality is ideally defensible only on the basis of a critical relation between these two terms, market and organization, a relation. Which would be effectively established by the means of communicative discourse. Marx was right to start the presentation of the modern form of society by the position of modernity. I mean, by what is officially, officially declared in modern society as such. This is an interpolation and a challenge address. Of each to each, in terms of liberty, equality, rationality, that Marx figured on the market 
seen. But this interpolation is actually more complex for this interpolation is not just a matter of contractual market interaction. We can address each other as free and equal only by establishing equally together a law by which everyone stands in relation of freedom with everyone. Therefore, contractual relation implies a double mediation that includes two poles, that each to each and that everyone to everyone among all. Each of these two poles has two sides, that of the economic understanding, market organization, and that of the legal political reason, inter-individual contractuality and central contractuality. This, uh, to put it in German philosophy, the side of, of Verstand and the side of Vernun. And this configuration can be verified as reasonable only under the criticism of the communicative discourse to each to each and everyone among all. Such is the presupposition posed by the modern uh, class structure. It doesn't constitute the foundation of modernity, but its fiction reference. It is this complex figure, and not just the market, which turn, turns into its opposite in exploitation, domination, alienation, within the so-called capitalist society. It is in this complex sense that the modern class domination is based, as claimed by uh, the Frankfurt School, on an instrumentalization of reason.
呃，就是一是 to 一是，就每个人对每个人，就是根据这种自由啊、平等啊、理性啊。但是这种质疑呢，确实是实际上是更复杂，不单单是个体对个体，就一是 to 一是，而且是 everyone among all， 就是说在所有个体中的每个人。的每的每个，我不知道怎么翻译这个，就是他这个意思。总体中的个体，总体中的个体的，就他又嗯说有这么一个维度。那么，那在这两级，就是说个体对个体和在所有整体中的每个人呢，又有两个方面。一那两个方面，一个就是经济理解的方面，就是他谈到个体和组，谈到市场和组织这方面。另一个方面就是指的法律和政治理性。法律和政治理性呢，它又分为个体间的这种契约性和这种 central contractuality， 就是这种中核核心的这种契约性。谈到他说这是一个是理智的方面，一个是这种理性的方面，用两个德德语词，大家可以看到是吧？嗯嗯嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，呃、it is from this metastructural viewpoint that we can now consider the structure understood as a class, as class structure within the nation state. <coughs> For this Marxian metastructural deficiency generates a structural error. Marx, in my view, failed to grasp conceptually the fact that the dominant class has two poles. While one related to the market, governed by property, and the other related to the organization, governed by competence. The owner's power cannot exist without the competent authority, in broad sense, of power knowledge. Competent authority for supposedly legitimate cultural purposes and for alleged effective. Technical means. So, on one side, then the owners, and the other side, the managers and competent, or finance versus elite. They constitute, in my view, two conniving and antagonistic poles. Each of them being endowed with its own mechanism of uh, social re reproduction. The unity. Between the competence pool, i.e., the continuity from managers to competent, from production to culture, consists in the fact that organization is always a matter of relation between supposedly rational means and presumi pre presumably a, a reasonable purpose. This new working out of the Marxian Conceptuality allows us not only to identify the bipolarity of the dominant class, but also to describe the other class. I propose the name and the concept of the fundamental class to refer positively to this historic historical social actor that a paternalistic language treats unilaterally as dominated. One can decipher the positivity of the fundamental class only by considering below the class relation what I call the class factors, which are the market and organization. As what they are, market and organization are our true primordial common rational reasonable resource beyond discourse or the social forms of our rationality reason, which are actually instrumented in, in their opposite in the class relation. Thus understood, the fundamental class appears immediately as being divided into various fractions according to which class factor uh, predominates. Market relations, among inde independent workers, peasants and others, organizational relation among the employees of the public institution, or with more interaction 
between, between the two factors, the market and organization, among the employees of the private sector. It's, it is also in this conceptuality that exclusion and precariousness can be analyzed. 